Hello everybody today. Uh, today I have a really fun project I'm going to do with all of you. So um, I hope you have all the things that's needed for this project. This can be a lot of fun. So the first thing you need is um, rocks. Okay, I do not have any decorative rocks to put in plants or what have you. So I had to go to Michael's yesterday and buy the rocks. My face looks really shiny for some reason. Let me fix this. Okay, that's a little, little better. Anyway, so I had to go buy rocks from Michael's yesterday because I did not have any rocks um, at my house. What is going on with my my lighting. Hi everybody that's joining. I haven't shown you what we're going to be making today yet. Okay, um, so the things you're going to need, some sort of rocks like these flat rocks here, okay, flat smooth rocks. If you have these, a lot of people have these outside in their like um, beds where the bushes are, whatever. These are fantastic. Um, so you need some rocks, you need uh, some paint, some types of paints, acrylic, uh, or these little craft paints, which are acrylic. You need some of those. I'm going to zoom up just a little bit. Maybe it'll stop the light from really doing that. Okay. Ooh, that's better. All right. And then, um, you're going to need a, some sort of water container and to rinse your brushes, you're going to need brushes and, um, a paint rag so that if you get it all over yourself, you can wipe yourself off. And also something to protect your table. And okay, so yesterday I made these little rocks and I was like, these are the ones I'm going to do today. And then I decided that these are not the ones I'm going to do today, but I want to show you what they are so you know, uh, so you can see. So, um, rock painting today. This is extremely popular. I don't know if you know this or not, but rock painting is extremely popular. There are, um, groups pardon me, all over Facebook, um, where you can join these rock painting groups and you paint your rocks, you go hide them somewhere in a park or something, and then other people, you can sign them if you want, and then other people find those rocks, they can put them back if they want, or they could take them home and replace them with their own rocks. So you get like this collection of little teeny tiny pieces of art um, that sorry, these this collection of little teeny tiny pieces of art that you can keep. And uh, I just think they're super cute. Uh, and so I wanted to do these rock painting things today, except we're, I'm not going to be doing these. Oops, I'm not going to be doing these today. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be showing you. And I just finished this a while ago. I had so much fun. I was like, oh my God, this is the one I want to do. I want to teach you all how to make a dragon eye, which is super cute, right? Oh, it's so great. Okay. So we're going to learn how to rock paint a dragon eye today. I love this one so much. You can put these like in your little garden outside because it's acrylic. You could spray paint over it with clear coat um, spray paints and make it really shiny and then stick it in your garden. You can stick it in your little plants. I love to put like little things in my plants that I have inside the house just because I don't know, I've always done it. I've collected rocks and little seashells and things like that. And I stick them in my potted plants. Well, I thought it'd be really cute to have like a dragon eyes sticking into your potted plant, right? So it looks like Something's looking out from your, out from the dirt in your potted plant. All right. And then the reason why I did the strawberry was, the reason for this one is, uh, well, A, it's cute. And B, if you have strawberry plants that you grow and you always have a problem with birds getting into your strawberry plants, you can make these, I know it takes a little bit of time, but you can make these little rocks and you set them around your strawberry plants. And what happens is your the birds will come and try to peck at these and then they'll realize that they're not edible and it deters the birds from actually eating your strawberries, which is another reason why I want to do the strawberry, but I'm not doing this one today. I'm just, this is an example so that you can see what I did do and what you can do. And this is the little house that I did. Um, and I like to use the shape of the rock for whatever it is I'm painting. So this rock looked exactly like a dragon eye to me, the shape of it. So I decided to make it a dragon eye. And that's what we're going to do. So first step first is if you have these rocks, I've tried to waste some time so you all can run out and get the rocks that you need out of your 
bed or whatever. Um, you're going to grab your rock. If you have some of these, that's cool too. Put them in your, in your thing. Okay, so I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. I want to get something that's kind of shaped like a dragon eye. You got to think about that. Like, what's the shape of the eye going to be? This kind of looks dragon-like, right? So I'm just going to go through some of these and see what I think is the best shape to use for my dragon eye. And then I'm gonna we're going to get to work. Now, if you already have... Um, a black rock and it's not brown or light colored, you can leave it black. However, the thing is with the rocks, if you're pulling them out of the bed, you want to go wash them off really quick with Dawn soap and water, right? Because they get that dirt on them and, and then the paint won't stick if they're not, if they're not clean. So make sure you want to make sure you clean them first. Oh, that looks like a nice little dragon eye, but it's too small. Okay, well, um, the best one I have for that is maybe, that's pretty cool, right? This is a good one. I think I'll use this one. All right, so this, or maybe this one. This one's kind of cool, too. Oh, I don't know now. Oh, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this one. Okay, so to start off, the first thing you're going to do, I can put all these rocks down. Um, for those of you just joining, I'm going to teach you all how to make a dragon eye rock painting. And now I have gold paint. If you don't have gold paint, that's fine. It does make it look extra. Uh, so if you want to go buy gold paint, you want to do this project later, or silver, my suggestion is to buy like some shiny paint or whatever. Okay, so to start off, we're going to, I'm going to grab my brush in this. You want kind of a fat brush and then a super thin um, little brush so that you can do the tiny little details that you're going to need to do, right? Okay, so I'm going to push these paints aside because you all know I have paints and water and all that good stuff. Okay, and then um, figure out how you want it to look. Like, what side do you want it on? What side do you think would look better? How you want it to sit um, is super important with your dragon eye. All right, so I think I'm going to let mine sit like this, potentially, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, it's going to sit like this. That's a good one. Okay, now, um, black. If you have black, the first thing you want to do is paint your rock black. This is pretty black, so I don't really know if I'll... I'm going to paint it anyway, just because. I'm going to paint it. So you want to paint the whole rock black. If it's already black, mm, you really don't have to worry about it, but... You can if you want. I like to do it the whole way because then it's just uniform. Try not to put too much paint on You put too much paint on it, it's going to take forever to dry, and then it's going to be really hard to do the rest of the painting. You're going to have to wait till it dries. Or you could use a hair dryer and dry it that way. I might have to do it that way since I'm teaching this. So paint your rock all black. Um, when it's finished, if you decide that you want to paint the black of it, I mean the black of it, the back of it black, you're more than welcome to do that. But my suggestion would be to wait until um, the front is dry before trying to paint the back because then it just gets all over the place and it's a mess. Uh, what I like to do is I like to think of how I'm going to be doing the scales. So however I'm going to be painting the scales on, if I'm going to do them diagonal or straight down or off to the side, you want to do your paint the same way because sometimes your brush will leave streaks. So the best way to do that is to streak the way you're going to be painting, like so, kind of like with the grain, right? That's how I do it. So I'm going to rinse my brush out and wipe it off. And I have two different paint pails, and that's because I can rinse my brush off in one with the a lot of paint in it. And then once I have most of it out, then I go back and I dip it in the cleaner paint thing and I, it just makes everything better. Okay, so now once you have that, um, I'm going to wait a second for that to dry because it will take a second to dry. And then you got to think about and decide what color you want your dragon to be, right? So, um, like I said, I have this shiny paint um, that I'm going to, so what I normally do, what I do first is I do the shiny paint first. Now, I'm going to do my dragon eye, I've decided, in like purpley blue colors. So I bought this stuff from, you know, I think I might have bought this from Walmart, but it's called Color Shift Paint. And so like, um, it's made by Folk Art, and um, when it moves, it like shifts colors a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but it goes to like this blue, purpley color. 
This one was the green color shift. So you see how it does, when it dries, it does that really pretty green gold effect. Right, well this one does a purpley, kind of purple blue. If you could see the cap, it kind of shows what it does. Right, so this is the color I'm gonna be using. So shiny first, if you don't have shiny, that's fine. You can do a lighter shade of something, but you want it a little lighter. You don't want it super dark. Okay, then you're gonna take your, see if this is still kind of tacky, but it's pretty dry. I'm, I'm good, I'll be good. All right, then you're gonna take your uh, teeny tiny brush and we're gonna start, um, sorry, we're gonna start um, drawing the eye out first. Okay, so that's the first step. So the first step is to dip your uh, teeny tiny detail brush in the paint, okay? You don't want a bunch on it, because if you get a bunch on it, it's going to glop all over your rock, okay? And then um, we are going to, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rinse this off again. Let me draw out on a piece of paper so you all can see what I'm going to do, because it's kind of hard to show you with the paint, as small as this is. I am still, however, going to zoom up. So let me zoom up on this and then direct you down towards the table. Can you see that? Oh, I might have to. I'm gonna have to turn this a little bit there. Okay, you can see it now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, let me move my my tripod back a little bit. It's a little too close for comfort here. There we go, and then that might be a little easier. Okay, all right, now that's more, more area you can see, right? Okay, and then so the way we're gonna do this is I'm going to show you how to paint Oops. lots of things on my papers. Okay, I'm going to show you how to how you're going to draw it on your rock with your paintbrush. Okay, so let me get a pencil or a pen actually, and this is how we're going to do it. So you're going to take your um, you're going to take your paintbrush with your paint on it, and you're going to do like this. Okay, you see that? So it's gonna be kind of like a hill. So once again, you're gonna take it like that. See that? And then once you have that done, we'll move on to the next step. So I'm gonna do that with the paint first so you all can see what I did. Let me rinse this out again and start over. Okay, so here we go. And then um, you can make your rock, you can make your eye small or you can make it large, that's up to you. Depends on how much scales you want showing um, on your rock, right? Okay, so I'm going to kind of go along with the natural shape of my rock because my rock is got a natural shape of a dragon eye anyway. What I would imagine a dragon eye to look like, right? Okay. And then I'm going to show you how to do the bottom part. So I don't know if you all can see this. Okay, so once I have that, the bottom part is like this. With your paint. Here. And around. So did you see how I did that? Here. And up and around. And you can make them different shapes. They don't have to be the same shape, you know. They don't have to be the same shape as mine. And that's how you do the dragon eye. So this is what my eye looks like right now. See that? All right. I'm not really a fan of how that looks, but it's okay. And you know what? Because it's on this black paint, for some reason, the purple color shift is not showing up the way I wanted it to, which is odd. It's really odd. Because it's supposed to not be like a goldy color. It's supposed to be like um, a blue-purple. Oh, well. That's how it's going to be. Okay, so then once you have your eye shape drawn on there, the next step is to go in and do the eyeball. So the eyeball is going to be like this, okay? So on the side, you're going to take that shiny or that light color paint, whatever kind you have, and you're going to put a small little line right there and you're going to do that on the same other side the same right there you go and this is what I have so far the eye is coming together already 
okay? And then once you have that drawn out or painted out, uh, the next step is to do the middle part of the eye. So you're gonna do the same thing, just a little further up, okay? Because you want like a black line around it. So let me show you what I mean by that. Circle it around. Can you see what I'm doing? It's hard to see what I'm doing because it's not overhead. Like this. So then you're gonna do this part right here next. And you're gonna do that twice so now your eyeball is becoming an eye, right? All right. And then once you have that done, the next step is to do your scales, okay? I don't like the way the purple isn't showing on this. I think I might go over it with a different color because I don't like that. So I'm going to go over this purple, even though it's shiny, <gasps> excuse me, with a different color. I think maybe I'll do blue. Well... Do I have a shiny, a pretty blue? Let me see if I got a pretty blue here. I might not. I might not have it. All my paint colors are like, oh, here, I have a purple. Maybe try a purple. I might have to mix a color, which I don't really want to do, but. Okay, let's see. Well, it's a little better. I really wanted the purple to shine through, but I think because it's black, I don't think the purple is wanting to show up because of the black rock. I think that's what's going on. So I'm just going to go over it just a little bit. Not completely because I want that, I kind of want that shiny to show through. I might have to go back over it. Oh, well, okay, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to mess with it. Then I'm going to take my shiny again. Oops, is this is what I got. And then I'm going to take my shiny again and I'm going to go over that. Um, with, I'm going to use, I'm going to use my gold. I have a gold and I, I think maybe this gold might look a little better. So I'm going to take this gold and go over it. So note to self, this color shift purple, which I didn't try before, doesn't work very well. So, okay. So then take your gold or whatever shiny color or whatever color you've chosen and you're going to start doing, um, scales on it. So you're going to start making scales on your eye. Okay. So that's the next step. Um, and I don't know how you want to make your scales, but this is how I'm making mine, if you can see it. And then I'll stop here in a second, and I'll pull out, pull it up to the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Because I don't know, like, how... I mean, you could do your scales any way you want. You could do them like this off to the side, like I'm doing, so it kind of looks like little eyelashes, uh, or whatever. Now, you can never judge what a painting is going to, what a rock painting is going to look like until it's done. That's, that's true for everything. Like, a lot of times I have this process where when I'm doing painting, I'll be like, ooh, I don't like this. And I go through this process every time I do it. Oh, I don't like this painting. Wait, no, it's coming together. No, I really don't like it. Um, and then before it's all over with, I genuinely like whatever I made. But it's just a process that I go through with my art that I do. I don't like it, I do like it. I wonder if anybody else goes through those same phases. Well, sometimes I make my best art when it's a mistake too, I found. When I'm like, oh, I messed that up, and, it, and then I'm thinking, well, did I really mess it up? Is it really a mess up, or did my subconscious say, do this? All right, then let me show you what it did. I don't know if I like these scales or not. Okay, and then you're just going to keep doing that all the way around. You want to make them bigger as you go out, okay? So bigger scales as you go out. Bigger. You just keep going around, right? Now, I'm going to color the inside of this. I'm not going to leave it black. Just so you all know, I'm going to do a different color underneath. Or in the middle, I should say. Oh, this is pretty. And that's a lot of scales to paint, too. Oh, well. I like to stagger the scales. If you stagger them, it makes them look a lot cooler. Like they're laying on top of one another. What I mean by staggering is this. Like every other goes in the middle, right? 
See that, how that's done? And I put scales on trees too. When I make my trees, my little whimsical trees, I add scales to my trees. Can you see that? It's hard, really hard to see. Okay, now I've got that done. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back through, I think I might try to zoom up even closer and see if that works because I just feel like I'm so far away. I don't know if it'll let me zoom up anymore. Without my phone falling. Maybe. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Let's see if it is it blurry. Can you see it? That's a little better. Not much, though. Okay, and then um, next I'm going to paint uh, the eye. I'm going to paint the eye. So the eye color, figure out what color you want for the eye. I really kind of like the yellowy colors for the eye just because... Um, man, that yellow really stands out. So, uh, yellow and green, just like I did this, just like I did this one, right? All right, so I'm going to start off with the dark green. You could start off with whatever color you have. Oh, it's so hard to see this. Let's see. Turn up my light. Maybe that'll work. Can you see it now? Oh, that is a little better. Okay, so then I'm going to start with my dark green, right? And then I'm going to paint... Goodness. Um, the eye. So paint the eye. All green. Or blue or whatever color you're painting your eye. Right? I need to figure out... Um... I don't have my Facebook camera on, and I'm wondering how good it is, how you all are seeing it. Give me, hold on just a second. Give me just a second here so I can get to my video and see what's going on. Okay. Oh, okay, you can see it. Oh, yeah, okay. Good. I'm glad I did that, so now I know. Okay. And then the next step is uh, you kind of want to let that dry, and then... Um, Blow on it, turn on a hair dryer, whatever you got to do. And then once you have that dry, um, we're going to go, not completely dry though. I kind of like to leave it just a little wet so I could blend in the lighter green that I'm going to use. So now I'm going to take a lighter green and I'm going to go around the sides of it, okay? I mean, yeah, like this. I guess. And then you just want to blend it in. Figure out how to blend it in. Right? It's just supposed to blend with that dark green and make it look like um, a gradient color, but this brush just is too thin. I should be using a thicker brush here. Um, and most of this you won't be seeing anyway. Most of this will be... Um, underneath the pupil of the dragon eye, right? Okay. And then the next step is to do the dragon pupil. So you want to get the black paint out. I always just use the caps. And then you're going to do the pupil. So the pupil is a diamond shape, mostly or however you want to make it and just paint that in. So it's not a complete diamond because at the top it's more flat. See that? Oh, that looks so cute. All right. Now you could leave your dragon black if you wanted. I, however, am not going to leave it black. I'm going to paint it. So I'm going to paint the inside of these, which I probably should have painted the whole rock first and then went over with black, but I did not because it's a learning process and this is how we learn, right? Since I've only done this once before. Um, all right, so now I'm going to do it blue. I was going to do it purple, but the purple isn't showing up. All right, so now I'm gonna, just going to start painting it blue. And I'm going to paint the inside of the little lines that I did with my shiny stuff. And I'll paint the insides of my scales, right? So that's how you're going to do that. You're going to start painting the insides of your scales. 
Now see, it would have been better if we would have painted the rock first, however, also. I find that sometimes if you wait to paint the scales, it gives it a little more depth than just painting the rock and then putting lines on top of it. Kind of like the way this looks, because you could tell that you went in and painted it individual when you do it this way. Does that make sense? So then I'm just gonna paint all these. I mean, there's lots of painting involved with these, um, with the scales. So you wanna give it like some light once you've got the other stuff done here. Oh, this is, this is turning out to be a pretty color. Now see, I should have, I need to paint all this blue up here now that it's dry. I don't know. I hope all of yours has turned out looking really cool too. Thanks for joining me um, while I rock paint. Anyway, as I said earlier, it's really cool to join these Facebook groups because um, they have them depending on where you're located, like uh, where you live. And then they have these Facebook groups where you can just join them and then you share the art that you made uh you tell that you went out and post put some out and then you a lot of times people will say where they put them you know and then people go out and hunt for them it's so cool it's like finding little miniature arts there's this guy there's this person um who has done art shows at city museum and he goes by the he goes by the name of doodle stones I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Doodle Stones. He's on Instagram. You can find him on Instagram. Oh my goodness. He makes the coolest rocks. And um, he turns them into pin. I believe he makes them into, you can wear them as little pins. And it's not that just he just paints. Because yes, he paints really cute little rocks. But also, um, it's, it's how he goes about getting the rocks. So like he goes to, um, he goes to like, all different places to get them like parks and rivers and things like that and then on the back of the rock he will put where he got the rock at and the rocks will be limited editions of like a limited edition of where he got that rock and um i i just i have bought one from him and i really like them mine is a little farmer guy um and i just thought it was so cute but anyway doodle stones his stuff is awesome, and you should check it out on Instagram. And 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 his the the reason he does it, he's got a really cool story about why he does it. And I would not want to tell you why he does it. You should go to his page because he tells a better story of why he does it. You know, it's so cool. It's all about unity, and that's so important. Okay, so now I've painted that much, right? And I think I want to paint the rest of the rock the color of the scales because to me, it, to, to me, I don't like it the way it is. So I'm just going to go around and paint the rest of the rock that color, okay? Okay. Oh my goodness, this is so great. These are so much fun. I don't know why I've never done this before. Why have I never done this before? All right, so now I've got that, and now i got to let it dry a little bit before I go and do any more to it. You can always go back over it with a second coat of paint if you need to, which is what I'm going to have to do with the eyeball because the eyeball is not the way I want it. So I'm going to have to go over that with a second coat. All right, so then I'm going to grab my green again. Grab my green again. And I'm going to detail that because I don't like, it's not detailed enough for me. So detail it again, go around it. Oh, that's better. That makes it super bright when you go around it a second time. Go over it a second time is awesome. There we go. 
All right. Yes, yes. Okay, I don't know if you all can see that, but this is cool. Somehow, got a little black dot of paint on there, but that's okay, I can fix that. My daughter always tells me that watching me paint is soothing to her. She always says she likes to watch that. And I have to agree, I love watching people paint too. All right, now let me get some more black and fix that part right there. And then um, once I have that done, go back over this, make this a little more defined, right? There we go. And then I'm going to give you a second to catch up because I need to let my dog out real quick. Come on, Chip. Bye, Elsa. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> anyway, um, now that I've uh, updated him with a little eye, oh, that looks so cool. Look at that. Yes. Super cool. All right, now once I have that done, the next step I'm going to do is, oh, this is great. I'm going to add, um, uh, I don't know if I want the purple. What do you think about the purple? Do you like the purple on there? I don't, I don't know if I do. I don't know if I like that purple. Um... I think I want to change it. I don't like the purple. I think I'm going to do it um, just plain old gold. Where's my gold? Here it is. Okay. Yeah, plain old gold. Right over that purple. And I think the purple will probably shine through it. More than likely. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, and yes, I do like that much better. That looks way better. Okay, and then the finishing touch for this, which is um, really gives it a little something, is the white that you put in the eye. And that really makes it stick out. So, you're going to take your white, all right, oh, see, good thing that I had something on my table because I just spilled paint on it. All right, so then you're going to take your white, and the whole idea is to give your eye like a little bit of glare, right? So figure out where you want your glare at. So I'm going to put a white dot um, right where the eye is. So. Look, it's already turned out looking cool. So right there. And then I'm going to put one over here on this part of the eye. The side. Then you want to give it like a little streak, you know, like a little kind of a triangle looking thing. Like that. Okay. And then, you know, you can add another one if you want. I kind of like that the way it is. Maybe I'll do another little dot over here. There we go. And look at that. We made, we made dragon eyes. I'm going to put some white right here in the corners. All right. Let me pull this camera out really quick. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. So that's what we did today. We had a lot of fun. We made these little dragon eyes, rock painting dragon eyes, right? So these are the ones I did. And then we, I did these to show you the little strawberry and the little house that you could make. Um, if you want any information on City Museum, you can go to citymuseum.org. It tells about um, when we're opening, how to reserve a spot for a City Museum to go in and play. Follow us on Facebook, and tomorrow I will be back on at 11 o'clock doing another fun project with you, and see you tomorrow.